the world economy has, has sort of paralyzed because of uh, COVID. Uh, the business world is uh, split between uh, taking precautions on their spending and investing on future-proof technology. Uh, we see uh, a lot of technology companies today uh, coming up with various solutions on uh, business continuity, uh, digital transformation, et cetera, while the business world out there uh, are trying to limit their expenses. Uh, but whatever industry we are, we are coming from, we, we all want our customers to feel welcome, uh, you know, feel protected, and we all, we, we all want them to uh, you know, uh, have that reason to stay with our brands, right? So this is where uh, I believe customer identity uh, access management or CIM uh, plays a key role. So today I have uh, a very experienced panel uh, who's been there, done that in their respective fields to uh, you know, talk, uh, talk to us about what CIM is and why we should uh, you know, take it seriously. Um, so with that, let me introduce uh, our panel today. Uh, first off, we've, we've got Mr. Nisala Koripili, CIO of Union Bank of Colombo. Nisala, uh, if you can uh, switch on your uh, camera. Hi, Palaste. And hi, Nisala, how are you? Uh, we've, we've got Mr. Uh, Yochu Niu, uh, Principal Researcher and, and Solutions Architect at uh, Telecom R&D Malaysia. Yo, good morning. And we've got Mr. Anindya Pranamik, uh, Senior Solutions uh, uh, Specialist uh, of WSO2 Architecture at LTI. Good morning, Anindya, good to see you. And finally, we've got mm -hmm. Prabhat Srivardhana, Vice President and Deputy CTO of uh, Security Architecture at WSO2. Prabhat, good morning. Oh, it's very early morning, I guess, for you. Uh, good afternoon from my side. There you go, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> Yo. All right, guys, uh, let's, let's get straight into it. Um, okay, before that, uh, everyone who's listening in, in case you hear a bark here and there, I don't always sound like that. All right. Uh, Prabhat, I'll, let, let me let me uh, start straight from you. Um, so you've been, you know, out there in, in the security and identity world uh, for a while. You've written books about identity and, and securing APIs, etc. So, Prabhat, uh, how do you define CIM? What is this? I mean, in, is this a misunderstood concept? Uh, you know, uh, or you know, do you see customers still not understanding the capabilities of CIM, Prabhat? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very good uh, question to uh, get started. And uh, maybe before we uh, get in, before we get into the definition of CIM, let's let's have a look at uh, the objective, uh, the main objective of a CIM. So it's it's mostly uh, the way I see is the the main uh, objective of CIM is to uh, drive revenue growth by uh, leveraging identity data to acquire and and retain customers. It will uh, uh, build an identity centric ecosystem to uh, nurture an anonymous website visitor in, into a a well-known customer. So that's the uh, the main reason uh, why enterprises are going ahead or moving forward with, with CIM. Uh, when it comes to the definition of CIM, once again, we see it's, it's a heavily uh, overloaded term. Uh, one uh, popular definition of CIM is that uh, it's an IAM discipline uh, for managing customer identities. Uh, Rather than calling CIM managing customer identities, uh, I would uh, like to call it a customer focused IAM. Uh, in my view, uh, customer focused IAM adds a lot of depth into the definition of IAM. Uh, for example, uh, unlike traditional IAM, when you focus on customers, uh, you probably start working with millions of impatient users who, who get annoyed by uh, filling lengthy forms and cannot wait at least uh, two seconds to log into a system. Even, even if there are small <laughs> glitch in your system, so they will probably take it to social media and, and, and will make a big, big uh, buzz out of that. Uh, moreover, uh, even the slightest uh, of leaked customer information could uh, take a big slice of your share price down. And, and we have seen many examples from the history. For example, uh, if you look at Yahoo, uh, so many uh, like data breaches happen at Yahoo. They they had to lower their their sales price when they when the when Verizon acquired Yahoo a few years back. So uh, calling CIM uh, customer focused IAM still uh, uh, still it won't add enough weight or, or on how it can catalyze business growth. Unlike uh, traditional IAM, a CIM system uh, should have the capability to integrate with uh, uh, CRM systems. Uh, marketing platforms, uh, e-commerce platforms, then uh, the content management systems, data management platforms, and, and many other uh, business systems. 
the customer focus iam system with uh, no business integrations adds a little value in terms of uh, business growth that we expect from having a cim solution so uh, with all these uh, i would define cim as cim as a customer focused iam discipline uh, that facilitates leveraging iam data with uh, business data to uh, catalyze business growth yeah so that's that's my definition of cim and so, so basically, uh, Prabhat, the, the user experience is, is very important here as well, right? That's right, okay. yeah. Excellent. So let me turn to uh, Nisala. So before that, guys, to the, to, the, to the attendees here. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, you know, jot it down in the, in, the, in the Q&A box down there, and, and uh, I'll get it answered uh, through the panel. Uh, so Nisala, coming back to you. Uh, so you've been in the banking industry for, industry for over 20 years now, and you know, you've seen how traditional banking has merged with technology to give us uh, uh, you know, digital banking. Uh, and you've taken banks through uh, the digital transformation journey, right? So, how do you how do you think that CIM will fit in uh, with digital transformation to start off with? Yeah. Okay. So, thank you very much for inviting me for this discussion. First of all, so I'll, if I take through like uh, where we have started, so most of the banks started their digital transformation journeys with uh, like basic products such as SMS banking, phone banking, with uh, basic customer identity and access management. I mean, very at very basic level. But if you look at past uh, five to seven years, all banks started their digital transformation uh, strategies aggressively. And uh, then the bank have realized the importance of capturing like uh, the future customers while serving for their existing customer base, because uh, the uh, otherwise like you are going to lose in a couple of years time your future customer base. So if you look at uh, uh, like uh, by default, uh, the security of your customer data is a key agenda in agenda in any organization, any bank, if I would say. And, but I must say, if you look at uh, uh, the uh, past uh, years, the cyber security threats have been increased and it had become most critical factor for all of us. And also with the digital transformation banks uh, realized the importance of uh, data and the formulated, uh, they have started formulating their in-house data and MS teams because of the data has become very important in their uh, transformation journeys. Yeah. And uh, so also uh, the further like banks are required to comply with the local and international regulations such as the uh, GDPR, GDPRS, uh, GDPR and also the upcoming the local data protection laws in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And uh, so if you look at today, uh, organizations are expected to keep increasing and delivering greater customer experience because uh, like... Uh, no one will be basically like uh, loyal to your any more product uh, products uh, like uh, you have many options in the market right now so you know in order to give up greater customer experience basically like uh, your ux then the personalized customer products based on your customer behaviors and those things have become automatically important now for you to survive and uh, uh, otherwise, what will happen is basically uh, the customers simply go elsewhere, like I said. And uh, so this means basically like having a greater customer experience, no more nice to have, and that it had become automatically essential now. So Kulasti considering yeah, these facts, uh, like uh, having CMA solution has become uh, essential for digital bank, uh, digital transformation strategies of the banks. So that is my response. I mean, great. I mean, you, you mentioned a few challenges as well, but I'm going to get to that uh, a bit later. So before that, I'm going to turn to uh, you uh, uh, right now. So you're so, so you're coming from a from a, a telco background, right? You know, you're a principal a researcher for Telco Malaysia. So how would you define CIM uh, and the role of CIM, especially uh, in digital business? Uh, thanks for inviting me as a panel. Okay. For me, actually, uh, when we're looking at CIM, it's actually an IAM for customer-facing application, right? So we are looking at a lot of features that we should have over the CIAM, like cell sign up, social login, or they call federal login, single sign on, this multi-factor authentication, or passwordless, or all role-based access, all these features we have to be coming in as a solution. And you see that when Telco right now is also actually uh, in the wave of doing a digital transformation, Telco no longer is only selling the pipes. They are actually selling a lot of digital service. Just for your information in Malaysia context, right now, actually, our government already have one initiative called My Digital Initiative, which are moving all our government clubs uh, uh, storage to cloud, actually. 
So one of them is that we as a telco also have to start doing a data center services and offer a cloud storage services. When you have this kind of different digital application coming in, right? You want to manage your customer much more properly actually from that uh, point of view. With a single sign on everything, they can actually enjoy the broadband services. They can enjoy the digital application like uh, cloud storage. They can enjoy other services like CDN, all these things. There will be a lot of things coming in. So what we look, look at is that the role for SAM is actually, you need to make sure that the process of user onboarding is much more, more, much more easier. And then you need to flexible in terms of the authentication. I don't think that people want to like uh, have a traditional way that username, password only, but they want more than that, okay? Because you need to cater different segments of the market. And of course, to close the gap when we move to the rural, right? Some of them may not have some of the feature that we be sophisticated, like mobile phone that have the fingerprint on that. Then they need a different feature for that, okay? Another yeah. thing that we're looking at is uh, how you're protecting the user privacy and also information. For your information, I think that in Sri Lanka, uh, Sri Lanka you all have the uh, Personal Data Protection Act. Same in Malaysia, we have the Personal Data Protection Act. So this is that uh, as a telco, we always have the term and condition to protect the user privacy. And we need to actually very clearly state how we process the data and how we actually protect their data. So this is all very important because we are keeping a lot of customer profile information. Okay. That's for my side. Right, excellent. Uh, yo, thank you very much for that. I think you mentioned a lot of uh, uh, CIM capabilities there, uh, uh, but we can talk about those as well. Uh, so before that, I'm going to turn to Anindya here. Morning, Anindya. Uh, so, so you're a senior solutions architect at LTI. So, so you are working with a lot of digital transformation projects uh, every day, right? So uh, what would you say the role of CIM is in, in digital transformation, Anindya? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me on this panel and um, and good morning, everyone. So our afternoon or evening. Um, so from a for, so if you ask me about digital transformation, we when we hear about this particular term, right? We think of uh, you know smart home products, we think of you know wearable technologies, uh, uh, you know autonomous vehicles, connected cars, and stuff like that, and this growing range of channels, devices, platforms, and uh, you know touch points. This is driving the need for a customer um, uh, IM, right? Uh, but there's more to customer IM, right? Just just enabling, uh, you know, just like you know, uh, uh, you had said that you know, just enabling the right uh, uh, individual. Uh, to access the right resources at the right time. That, that is something which probably, you know, CIM, uh, you know, comes in. So from a digital transformation perspective, you know, a, a, an enterprise or a, or a business will look at uh, a frictionless, consistent, omnichannel experiences, uh, you know, those are, that is facilitated by a single sign-on kind of a technology, right? Uh, which helps in, you know, customers, satisfaction customers experience okay and to facilitate secure and privacy respecting and useful interactions with the customer uh, many companies uh, you know will probably you know in a uh, is turning to a customer identity and access management solution okay um, so so, so from a digital transformation perspective, uh, the role of the CIM is is huge. It's large in terms of you know it it needs to provide not just authentication, as you said, uh, it needs to provide authentication, authorization, privacy management, um, uh, storing of uh, you know securely storing of consumers' identities uh, in terms of its you know. Uh, uh, in terms of its various factors and various facets of those identities needs to be stored securely, right? Uh, then you have uh, API integrations and API uh, uh, security that also is coming under CIM, uh, uh, you know, Remix. So, so there are a, a huge number of possibilities in terms of you know what CIM can do in a digital transformation uh, uh, today, right? Okay. And and the scope is. Uh, getting larger every day from a from CIM perspective. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Anindya. Uh, so um, I've got a question as well from, from the audience, uh, Chaminda. So, so you're asking, uh, does CIM enablement uh, for a bank or financial institute need to have a cloud environment? So uh, maybe uh, Prabhat uh, and, and Nisala coming from, from uh, the financial background as well, if you can, guys can maybe uh, very quickly answer that uh, before I get into the next question. So does CIM enablement for a bank or financial institute need to have a cloud environment? If you look at uh, the local context, uh, the uh, the central bank is still drafting the guidelines on cloud, uh, so it is at the, uh, the draft stage. But uh, so if you are having a, going to have a solution in cloud, uh, uh, the, as per the, the upcoming requirements, the, there's a necessity to have a local uh, solution also running. So uh, uh, CIM solution, as from my understanding, basically you can have it on-prem. So not, not necessary to go as a cloud. So uh, anyone can add some uh, lights into the question, yes. But I mean, uh, are we late to this, this uh, Nisela now, uh, you know, VB and, and Prabhat as well, uh, uh, we see a lot of other uh, banks, you know, elsewhere in the world, you know, sort of, you know, going in for, uh, you know, cloud solutions, but are we sort of, you know, lagging behind us? No, we, uh, like, uh, so the banks always wanted to go Go for cloud solutions and even i mean uh, say the, the most of banks started this journey hmm. so that even today like uh, uh, basic example of 0365 it's on cloud but uh, the the regulator is coming up with the uh, regulations on uh, the cloud computing so we got to ensure that we adhere to those things uh, while we are uh, embarking on cloud journeys okay that is i mean look at for talking about pure sri lankan context Okay, excellent. Uh, Rahul, uh, I've got your question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, you know, park that for the moment because this, this will be covered. Uh, I'll come to that. Um, I'm gonna uh, go back to Prabhat here. Uh, so come back to you, Prabhat. Uh, so, so you work with customers all over the world, right? So, what are some of the key challenges that you have seen your customers go through, and and how do you think CIM uh, will will uh, play a role in overcoming these, Prabhat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, over the time, actually, we have spoken to uh, hundreds of customers and, and probably thousands of leads. Uh, from uh, all those conversations, what we have learned is uh, different customers are at different levels of maturity in, in building a CIM solution. Some uh, even don't know uh, they are doing CIA. Hmm. So uh, we came up with a maturity model to help businesses to understand uh, where they are in the CM journey today and what they need to do to get to the next level. So let me uh, quickly, uh, briefly uh, go through <laughs> different levels uh, that we see in, in the uh, CIM maturity model. So that will help you understand uh, like the overall uh, CIM uh, journey. Most uh, businesses, uh, uh, they, they start with level zero maturity level or non-existent. Uh, at this level, you don't worry about uh, tracking any uh, customer interactions. Uh, probably you don't have an online portal and probably you don't uh, do any sales online. Uh, in case you have an online portal, you may use it only to share your uh, product and contact information and, uh, and would not expect any uh, dynamic uh, customer interactions. Uh, probably uh, uh, you may use uh, systems like uh, Viber, WhatsApp, or a phone line to accept orders, but still uh, you don't worry about tracking uh, who places uh, which order. Uh, many restaurants, uh, taxi services, uh, retail stores, and many uh, family businesses uh, follow this model at the start. Then uh, at level one, oh, uh, we call it uh, the managed identity phase. Uh, there are you only worry about onboarding uh, your customers to the system and digitally managing uh, the identities. The, the businesses operating at this level, uh, mature level one, uh, so there are like a varying level of uh, emphasis on how they want to manage their customers, customer identities. Uh, one may only worry about onboarding customers at an online portal and then uh, let them authenticate to the system their username and password, for example. Another business worry about uh, integrating with social IDPs for registration, uh, enabling strong authentication options with adaptive authentication, uh, integrate with risk engines, uh, do identity analytics, and so on. Then uh, level two, or, uh, we call it as siloed. 
it's it's one step forward from the uh, managed IoT phase. Here you uh, have an IoT management system in place, and uh, you also worry about having a CRM system, a marketing platform, and e-commerce platform, CMS, then data management platform, and and many more to know and learn more about your customer. This does not necessarily mean that uh, all the businesses in this measured level uh, have all these systems in place. Probably uh, you will start with CRM system and then gradually uh, move into others. One deficiency we see in the businesses in this phase is, uh, even though uh, they collect customer data at different uh, contact points, the data sources are disconnected and uh, do not help in building a unified profile uh, for a given customer. When you want to uh, uh, generate a report across uh, multiple data sources, uh, for example, uh, that would require a high uh, labor intensive process with human involvement. And even in some cases, you may fail to find uh, a correlation among different data sources. This is in fact, uh, uh, the phase we see uh, business would start worrying about the CM system. Once you are in this phase, you'll understand the benefits of building a unified view of a customer. And at the same time, you will start realizing the deficiencies in your current system that prevent you from getting there. Then the level three or the connected phase, uh, this is the phase where you start integrating uh, your IAM system with your CRM system and other, other business systems. This, this helps in building a unified view of your customer. Uh, for example, uh, you can have a dashboard uh, which shows you how long it took to nurture an anonymous lead to a loyal customer. Then uh, finally, uh, the level four, uh, we call it uh, the optimized phase. Uh, omnichannel access is a key uh, feature we see in the businesses that operate at this level. Uh, in omnichannel uh, environment, uh, the customers interact with the businesses via uh, multiple channels, but still uh, will get a seamless, uh, continuous user experience. For example, uh, Amazon, in fact, took the retail ordering placing system to the next level with, with Alexa. If you are an uh, Amazon customer, you can place an order via its website, uh, mobile app, Alexa, or via Kindle, and, and still you will get a unified experience across all those channels. Then the CXO dashboards is another key feature uh, we see in, in this phase of CIM. The CX, CXO dashboards uh, uh, get updated in near real time with the data with respect to uh, the current status of business and also uh, the predictions derived from integrating with uh, uh, machine learning systems. Also uh, in this phase, uh, machine learning and, and behavioral analytics uh, are, are being used to suggest how you can design uh, better, uh, more effective uh, UXAB testing uh, for user registration, as well as uh, for login flows. But uh, we only see a small percentage of companies uh, at this optimized level. So it's a, it's a continuous journey. So you need to plan well uh, where you are today and, and what are the gaps you need to fill uh, to get to the next level. Thanks, Prabhat. Uh, I'll probably take uh, Rahul's question there because it's sort of related as well. Uh, so he's asking about, you know, how far business intelligence on cloud uh, is, is out there and, and, you know, when will that be ready for implementation? You know, something like business intelligence on cloud. Yeah, so that's one benefit of like having a SaaS solution, especially for the business intelligence. Uh, especially like so for the business intelligence and uh, when you want to integrate with uh, machine learning and AI, uh, the, the size of the data set is a critical factor to, to make better decisions. So algorithm itself is not enough. You need to have a large data set. So if you uh, operate in an isolated manner, then what you have is only your data set. So that is not sufficient enough and it take a long time to gather more data. But when you go to uh, uh, cloud solution, like especially for uh, business intelligence and for machine learning stuff. Then they used to gather data from multiple, like, so they're, they're all the, their customers, but they make sure those are anonymized. Like uh, they don't make sure that they, they, they'll make sure that data not getting mixed up, but they will use different patterns from different customers across the board to, to, to help your business to grow or make you make you more informed decisions. 
so i think it's quite important like uh, those things you cannot achieve by by using machine learning or business intelligence through like on prem systems and it will take some time yeah thanks prabhat uh, thank you very much for that so i'm i'm going back to uh, nisela here uh, so nisela uh, what are your biggest uh, iim challenges you you overcome in your career and you know uh, what are the potential challenges that that you would see uh, in the industry okay so uh... Well, last is uh, basically I have met, uh, faced uh, R&D and access management challenges related both employees and customers. So uh, the management I I am for employees somewhat easier compared to customer I am mm. uh, because like I am for customers have less users compared to customer I am the I employee I am less compared to customer I am. So issues related to your scalability, extendability, availability are not complex uh, compared to customer IAMs. And uh, if I talk about challenges faced when uh, the maintaining employee IAM, uh, when when IAM is not centralized, maintaining accurate information is uh, in multiple system is not an easy task. Okay, so then uh, when it comes to like uh, your resignations, promotions, transfers. Managing them, maintaining them in manually, so in multiple systems, will be a biggest challenge. And uh, say if you think a scenario where like repercussions of failing to revoke access rights uh, of an employee who had left the organization, and uh, or transfer to a different department, we can think of. And uh, uh, the other challenge on uh, the basically the with the uh, Uh, current pandemic, IAM, IAM has become more challenging since you need to care for less uh, managing their like BOIT devices. So uh, we, I have some experience automating this through uh, RPS, but uh, uh, if I if you ask, I am not totally satisfied with the outcome. On uh, custom IAM, uh, biggest issue we face is basically the uh, the authentication of identity documents provided by the customer. you know like the many customers don't have updated the identity cards so like most of them were still uh, like uh, having uh, the identities issued that they are while they are schooling and uh, so validation of this information is a challenge it's a, like uh, it's a, a country wide problem that we have and uh, then the next issue is having multiple home grown systems where due to silo implementation like uh, at various stages we have implemented various uh, systems without having a centralized iam and uh, custom information are maintained in multiple systems without having single source of truth so where customers are required to use like multiple user ids and password to lo- log into various like uh, digital channels and also uh, this will lead to issues such as setting say if you want to send up like a target uh, market marketing communication or promotional information so you, you will not be able to pick the your target audience correctly and uh, also uh, we somewhat manage this uh, by linking multiple iam systems uh, by 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 having aps to update information within among systems itself and uh, so then then we talk about the scalability issues where systems cannot cope up with the uh, issues like uh, So the common issue, if I can pick up, is the where you will not get your OTPs on time, and as a result of where basically the transactions are getting time bound. And uh, then when it comes to data and MIS, the most of the homegrown systems will have will provide limited information to the management for decision making, and they will not have extensive customer information where uh, like you can go into deep dive into customers uh, like uh, transaction patterns and all. Also, the legacy architectures. in the like organizations will limit your capability to scale when you required and uh, uh, so this week we we have seen this like uh, when you have a spikes for demands like uh, uh, the current lockdown and the pandemic so the systems couldn't cope up so i mean uh, those are the challenges uh, like uh, i have seen uh, uh, with the uh, iams Yeah, I'll bring a uh, yo here. Uh, so, you are the are these uh, challenges very similar in in the telco space as well, or you know how how would you take it in terms of yeah, challenges? Yeah, I think 
Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think that <clears throat> as a communication service provider, actually we are facing the same problem because we are diversified, we have diversified the business in terms of digital solution offering that I mentioned to you that right now, actually we have a um, kind of like uh, one uh, group in TM is actually handling on the B2B customer. And then one more is handling from B2C, which is more on the uh, mass customer for that. So they have two different uh, customer profile. One is more towards the enterprise and one is more towards the actually uh, normal mass market, okay, for the normal user profile. So how you manage these two, uh, two together? Because some of them, when they go to the uh, enterprise segment, they will use their so-called uh, company account to, uh, to register with your uh, portal. How you link together the both as a, uh, a normal consumer and also the enterprise consumer? How you merge between them? I think there's also a bit of uh, different data source in between them that we did actually need to actually consolidate. So one another thing is that when the digital solution keep on growing, right? Your customer base will grow. So in terms of the IAM uh, uh, management, it will go uh, going to be more challenging in terms of how you doing how you can uh, scale able to actually handle this excessive login, especially when you're doing a promotion or campaign days for that. So this is a, one of the challenging that we will be facing. So we need a, some time of the IAM that need to scale out and down easily. That's I think probably for uh, all uh, application, digital application right now in the markets will be doing the same because during a pandemic, everyone going online actually. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. one yeah. more actually challenge that we have actually right now is that we, have, we are actually a national carrier. So we need to actually help to close the digital gap between the suburban, uh, between the sub, uh, urban and suburban and rural. That's why I keep on mentioning is that then you have a different technical background of the people that we here, we call it much. It means that the auntie inside uh, in the rural area, right? They, they won't have this um, kind of like uh, very sophisticated phone, mobile phone. So how you get them on board? You need to think about the way to get them on board to the even you are doing some SAMs because you want to get uh, inclusive and many customers as possible because we are actually offering the services out, out there, the suburban and rural as well. So how are you going to make them on board for that? So there are something out the technical challenge that we need to do for that lah, as well from our side. Okay, uh, excellent. So so this is this is where I think I mean that you can play a role, right? I mean, you, you're coming from a global systems integrator who you know, help customers every day to, to find solutions uh, to, to these business problems. So, so when do you think a company should start think uh, about CIM? Uh, you know, uh, or how, how do you get started actually? Excuse me, is oh, that question? So Prabhat had already probably took that particular question, how do they get started, right? So from a silo to, a, to various stages of that, uh, of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of an implementation of uh, a CIM. Uh, when do they get started? If depending upon the business, if the business is you know a customer facing business where there is a need for you know heavy customer interactions from outside world, external customers uh, rather than you know more more from a more from an external customer perspective, uh, they. If they haven't uh, done it by now, they need to do it start now, right? So the answer to this in short is now. Um, the, the, so, so many CIOs and CSIOs, they, they don't understand why it's CIM and why is it so important to have a, a, a proper CIM in place, right? So a lot of enterprises we have seen, uh, they do not have a proper uh, CIM. Uh, they have a IM solution more mostly for uh, their employees, and they want to extend it for their customers as well. And uh, you know, in many cases, we have seen that they have uh, faced a lot of challenges, right? And uh, it, it's it's about uh, uh, you know in in for a for a particular uh, you know enterprise or for a particular company the c level employees they need to actually you know come up with uh, you know as nisala has already you know mentioned that he has done a number of things you know with cim uh, using rpas and and those kind of things so they need to come up with strategies uh, 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 like immediately because the the rate at which we are growing in terms of um, uh, you know in terms of 
uh, adoption of digital channels, various kinds of digital channels. Uh, we, we need to, uh, you know, adopt this uh, particular uh, CIM solution uh, probably right away, depending upon the business, as I said. And, you know, a CIM from a, from a company's perspective, right, where they need uh, a customer's data in terms of uh, having proper targeted marketing, uh, proper monitoring of their customers, proper privacy management, uh, right? And you, you get a lot of things out of a CIM, right? Apart from just the authentication authorization perspective, you also get, you know, analytics for your customer's data, right? That's one of the best things about having an advanced CIM solution, right? Uh, that it it can it will give you the the ability to tie in your customers analytics and give you a very deep and clear understanding of your customers in fact at a, at an individual level of your customers right and it it will a, a proper cm solution you know as a part of this will help you know access of data control uh, sorry access control uh, aggregation of data so so how, what to show okay um, it it gives a company you know a very strong uh, you know privacy management very strong um, uh, frictionless security uh, you know these kind of features that that provides you know a proper advanced cim solution and hence a company should look at it right away because security is paramount and uh, uh, you know companies tend to look at security at a later stage rather than now okay when we come out with a solution like uh, in the rush for going to market we tend to look away from the security aspects saying that you can we can handle security at a later stage however if you have a proper cim solution in place you can actually you know implement it then and there and uh, you know you go forward with your products in the market uh, you know create those products without uh, without the worrying of you know the security aspects of it right uh, so so that would probably be my answer it's like if you want me to answer when a company should go uh, for a proper cim solution they should start looking at it now if they haven't already Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, start maybe, maybe even even yesterday, right? Rather than, you know, tomorrow <laughs> for these kind of things. Yes, right. excellent. Uh, so come back to uh, uh, Nisela on this, you know, as, as a CIO, um, uh, you know, uh, Nisela, uh, how do you decide, you know, uh, uh, to go for a CM solution uh, or build something, you know, in-house? Okay, so uh, if you look at uh, implementing a comprehensive, uh, like, uh, uh, CM solution, it's uh, much more complex than the simply uh, any other technology deployment in my way. So implementation of CM is uh, also not, not a purely IT responsibility and it should be organization wide responsibility. We are, we are like uh, marketing teams, then the risk and the operations department uh, should ideally get involved. And uh, so the uh, if you look at uh, the uh, factors uh, of such like uh, usability you have to look at how cm solution can be integrated with your existing solutions because you 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 may have already deployed your multiple digital solutions such as mobile banking apps like uh, web solutions contact centers etc and uh, so you should look at how easily you can integrate with your cm solution with your existing technology landscape because that's an important factor and uh, say if your if your organization is a matured level where we while we are like uh, say uh, Prabhat said basically having CRM solutions, digital marketing hubs, marketing data management platform, master data management solutions, then then you got to uh, look at integrating with such systems as well. And uh, also you should have a clear understanding on your organization wide systems which carry customer data because like when you go for implementation if you missed out and if you don't have a clear understanding of the multiple systems which carry customer data then uh, that would be a problem and uh, also like you should consider your growth strategies like your future expansion plans when you consider a cm solution because uh, that those things those volumes and what is like uh, what is coming up 
at least you should plan it for next five years, three to five years when you are deciding on the CR solution. And uh, when it comes to, if I move to the evaluation of a CM solution, then uh, you should look at whether, okay, so can it be supported for your mini channel experience? Whether maybe it a mobile web chat or contact center, can that be supported? And uh, the extendability of the solution, like uh, like uh, whether solution support for APIs for integration, and uh, how easily you can ex uh, the uh, integrate it to existing solutions with the uh, integrated with the CIM. Say say for an example, if you have to spend more than the CIM solution for uh, the other changes of the other integrated application, then the then this this will be an issue. So you have to uh, I mean uh, think of your technology landscape and understand with your how what is the best solution which is supported for your existing landscape otherwise it will be a costly affair i would say and the like uh, the scalability of the solution whether okay can it be uh, the cater for future demands like uh, handling spikes like uh, the we talk about the pandemic and lockdowns and etc yeah and and uh, the availability, if we talk about, okay, so it's uh, supporting backing up all the digital solutions. So it has to be 24 by 7 by default. So the high availability, whether it's it will be supported for those kind of things, you have to look at that. And uh, most importantly, basically, you, are, you got to ensure that uh, the uh, local and the whatever the international regulatory requirements like GDPR and local data protection laws, whether it's supported for that. And uh, if when it comes to uh, the banks and the many organizations, they have already have so their certification, like uh, ISO 27000. Then if you're dealing with customers, cardholder data, PCI, DSS, whether since this is again directly linked to those uh, aspects of the customers, whether it's supported for those aspects, especially PCI, DSS and all. Whether okay. the then, yeah, whether the CM solution provides your company with the critical business data. Because, like, uh, yeah, say your key people, like in sales department, will need to know ready to use data for a marketing quick decision, making quick decision. So, with your CM solution support for that uh, in providing adaptive analytics, that's a question which you should consider. Then, when it comes to security, like your yeah, biometrics with liveness detection, whether it's support for dynamic identifiers such as like uh, devices, locations, transaction knowledge, whether it's as a transaction knowledge. And uh, uh, then uh, whether uh, the, uh, whether, what is the deployment strategy? Okay, so whether we want to have it on-prem or basically in a proud, private cloud, or we want to go as a, uh, identity as a service. So depending on your strategy, basically you should uh, consider, okay, solution whether it's supported for your, the deployment strategy. And uh, the most importantly, the cost of the solution and the support yeah. and the past experience, because I mean, say the end of the day, you have to deal with this for your yeah, next, uh, like whatever the, uh, the future, all the uh, future projects. So mm -hmm. with the past experience and the availability, most importantly, availability the local resources. So they're like, okay, so when you have a problem, whether you can, I mean, reach out easy to, easily to a, your vendor. So, I mean, those are the aspects uh, we should look at, in my opinion. You mentioned a really good point there, you know, the integration, right? Uh, I think it's really important to, to actually, uh, you know, select a vendor who, who's got those uh, integration capabilities, capabilities yeah. as well, I guess, you know, that's a really good point. Um, so uh, I'm going to turn to to both the Yo and Anindya here, uh, you know, because both of you are, uh, you know, senior solutions architects. Right? So uh, let me ask this from the both of you. Um, uh, in your experience when implementing CIM solutions out there, uh, very briefly, uh, what has worked and, and what hasn't for your customers? You know, maybe in you know, a couple of sentences, you know, what do you think? What has worked and what not? Okay, uh, you, you can take, take up. Uh, maybe yeah. I start first. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> because actually one thing, even in, within our company itself, when you have multiple product, right? Everyone wants their own branding. So basically when you integrate that uh, sign up page or whatever, or sign in page, that need to be actually easily customized. That's a technical challenge for everyone. And then everyone want to own that page. So how you do it and don't make sure that everyone happy with that integration. So the only technical challenge I see is IAM. It need to be extensibility support for that. And then API base should, should be over there for the easy integration part. 
that's all the uh, basic requirement that we require coming from this kind of uh, IAM things. Otherwise, is if your product is cannot extensible uh, as extensible for other kind of integrator apps or whatever, or make it difficult for a uh, developer to do on it, then probably they they will be dropped from our consideration for that. Okay. Uh, on India, if you can uh, elaborate as well. Uh, yeah. So, so um, you know, things that have worked are uh, you know taking on uh, a proper CM solution or proper IM solution uh, for customers, which is uh, which is more of an you know acquiring or procuring a particular software who are uh, experts in this. What I've seen hasn't worked till now, uh, uh, probably from a distant, uh, from a distance uh, uh, from the clients. That you know, there are clients who were uh, pretty confident that they can build their own solution, own customer um, identity and access management solution. So this was a question between build and build versus buy for the customers, right? Uh, well, uh, the, 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 there are a couple of customers who went for a build and uh, that actually did not go as expected, right? So, so uh, they wanted to, they had a very good uh, uh, you know, resources, security resources, and they wanted to build uh, their own solution. However, you know, the cost overrun, um, the, the uh, uh, you know, they needed to do some, uh, uh, you know, the, the compliances, uh, right? And audit readiness of those particular uh, uh, products that they built uh, internally. Uh, they were not up to the mark, okay? So I would say that did not go well for customers when they tried to build a, a CIM solution on their own without the, uh, you know, without the proper uh, 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 expertise, to be very frank. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, um, there have been you know cases, implementation related cases where uh, you know uh, things like uh, newer devices, uh, uh, you know, so so a particular IAM solution you know uh, was there for the customer, and then they wanted to extend it for uh, as a, a, a uh, you know a customer IAM solution, right? Uh, it was previously uh, being used for employees, then which was somewhere around, you know, probably the numbers of employees were somewhere around 30, 40,000 across the world. And they wanted to extend it to their customers, which ran into millions of uh, customers, right? And those customers, if uh, they, they did not want to wait for more than two seconds for, you know, logging into a particular app or the so when they started, uh, you know, extending their features or the IM uh, to their customers, it started misbehaving, if I may coin it like that, right? <clears throat> and that is where, uh, you know, the the share of uh, that particular company fell in terms of customer experiences, customer satisfaction. Absolutely. So, since so, we need to, you know, invest well in terms of a, a, a company should invest well in terms of their uh, in terms of having a proper customer and identity access management to in place for the company itself thank you right. so, thank you so, yeah, that's about uh, it. thank you very much uh, i'm actually going to bring in prabhat here uh, I, I was actually going to ask him you know uh, you know what what sort of uh, cn capabilities that, that a business should look at but then again i'm, I'm actually going to uh, uh, make him answer that uh, through a question that that uh, uh, that we've got here in, in, the, in the Q and A section. Uh, so the, the question is, uh, how can uh, CIM uh, CIM uh, uh, apply to information technology industry? How is CIM applied to the information te uh, uh, technology industry, Prabhat? Uh, maybe you can sort of answer uh, that with the question as well. Sure. Yeah, I think uh, the CIM is applicable to uh, all the industries across uh, all the verticals. Uh, so whenever you uh, work with uh, customers. So it's not just customers, even, even B2B scenarios uh, where you work with uh, partners, uh, suppliers, so that will also uh, fall under uh, CIM. So yes, so uh, if you take WSO2, for example, right? So we, we are a company in the, the IT domain, right? IT industry. 
So, uh, so internally, uh, we are using identity server, like uh, WC product, like to build the CIM, CIM solution. So any, any IT organization can do that too. Uh, so any IT organization, so they work with customers, right? So whoever buy WC products or whoever buy you uh, one products, the, the products that you produce, so they are your customers. So you need to, uh, you need to see like uh, how you can uh, uh, track them and then again uh, uh, track uh, or learn about uh, their behaviors and also once again uh, uh, see the, the entire journey of the customers. Uh, for example, at WSO2, uh, we use uh, Salesforce as our CRM system. Then we use uh, Pardot as for our marketing automation and we use uh, MailChimp and many other systems to uh, work with customers. Then we have our website login for our customers. So they all uh, reside under our IAM. And then uh, we have integrated all these uh, business uh, systems with our IAM system. So yes, so it's across all the verticals. So whenever you work with uh, customers and to some extent with some other businesses, so uh, having a CRM system uh, will be really useful. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhat. Uh, so with that, uh, guys, I'm going to... Uh, there'll be a small, uh, uh, you know, a poll or a survey popping up in your screens. Uh, just, uh, you know, if you can just take, you know, 20 seconds to, uh, you know, answer that as well. Uh, that'll be really uh, useful for, for us also to sort of, you know, uh, take certain things forward. Um, so if you, if, you, if you see your little uh, survey coming on your screen, just you know, take a little bit of time, maybe 30 seconds to, to answer that. Uh, with that, um, let me uh, come to uh, uh, you here. Um, now you've been a, a researcher, right? So, so what are the you know from from a researcher point of view, uh, what are the latest uh, trends uh, and as customer expectations you see out there, uh, especially in the CIM space? Uh, you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, I think right now when we adopt, uh, I think probably the most uh, advanced feature that we are looking at is something like kind of additive authentication means that. We probably want something else that when uh, you can know the capability of the devices because there will be a lot of brand actually use a, uh, bring your own device kind of to do a login or whatever. Then you know the feature of the devices Then you can easily actually adapt the authentication, follow the actually mechanism of the mobile phone or the portal or the uh, laptop or whatever. This should be actually put in place. And then this is something else that we really need to look at it. And then of course, AI machine learning is coming in. So all these things is actually when you have a lot of information coming from the user profile, right? I'm thinking about how you match these two customers that have a different two federated login. Maybe you have a federated login and then you have different social account. How are we going to match this together as a single profile information? That's something else that machine learning can help to do that. That's something else also when we go for user behavior tracking from coming from different source of uh, login, you can actually allow this to be happen and then track it properly, know your customer, all these things from that. I think this is something else the same has to be starting to doing that, uh, to put this more feature in, especially related to the AI and machine learning, and then to try to improve on that. And then you could be actually a very uh, type of uh, things to moving forward to make sure that we serve the much better customer experience for that. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, all right. Guys, again, uh, just a quick reminder, there is a, there is a, a small poll there, uh, probably not on your screen right now. So if you can just take a, a couple of, uh, you know, maybe 30 seconds or so to, to answer those, uh, that'd be appreciated. Um, all right, so with the interest of time, guys, I want to, you know, uh, maybe we spend, spend a little bit of time on Q&A as well. But before that, uh, I just want to, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, come to Nisela finally uh, from, a, from a senior CIO, uh, you, know, uh, you know, from the point of a senior CIO, you know, what would be your advice to young CIOs out there, especially from a customer uh, point of view, Nisela? Yeah, so in my opinion, like Arindya said, uh, it's important to address this matter in early stages of your digital transformation strategies. And uh, so I'm recommending to develop a roadmap while identifying gaps and prioritize your CM implementations. Uh, like it's important to sync with your organization digital roadmap. So uh, have a roadmap where basically uh, syncing with your uh, the digital, uh, the, the organization digital strategy and have a roadmap, uh, first of all, for your prioritizing the CRM implementations. And uh, when it comes to capturing customer data, like other panelists 
recommended uh, i'm also recommended to have a progressive approach rather than basically asking asking for larger set of uh, input data up front and uh, uh, on in, in terms of the like customer data master data management try try to keep customer master data in master data management system rather than maintaining in isolated systems say so if you if you even already have customer data in isolated systems have a mechanism to update them with uh, having outdated uh, without having outdated data and uh, try to use one system as a master data management system then it's uh, easy whatever the integration you are looking at that would be easy task for you because otherwise the uh, data cleansing and uh, like city we will you will not have a single source of truth when you are in uh, uh, the communicating with customers and so finally in conclusion what i have to say is customer identity and access management should be an important agenda in your digital transformation journey so that's all from me fullest sorry as usual i was talking on mute uh thank you very much nisela uh so with that i'm going to just open up for q and a guys you know you've got a couple of minutes uh, if you want to you know uh, you know bring in your questions uh, on 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 the on the little q and a box down there uh and also you know uh, we can keep on answering those uh, poll questions as well um okay right so one question that i've got here is uh what makes yaim different from iam um anyone wants to take that maybe prabhat if you want to take that yes uh, i think uh, so there are there are two two ways or different ways that you can look into that question so one is uh, from the expectation side uh, so with iam uh, or else like uh, we can call it uh, workforce iam or employee iam and the other one is ciam consumer iam with employee iam you are mostly focusing on your employees uh so uh, uh when you compare that with ciam the 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 user experience is not that critical right so uh, even though like your systems are like uh, uh hard to work with like even though you had to like log into multiple systems multiple times your employees of course most of them they will tolerate that right but that's totally different when it comes to ciam if the experience is is hard then they will like uh, go into one of your customers so the user experience is one of your competitors so the the user experience i see the the most critical factor like in terms of expectation uh, that will differ uh, uh, employee iam or workforce iam from ciam and when it comes to feature wise so we see uh, there's an overlap like for example a single sign on federation uh the adaptive authentication the continuous authentication then uh, then the some like user administration functionalities so there are overlapping area uh but in addition to that uh, what what is specific to ciam is like uh, uh, the experience for example i think nisela mentioned that too the scalability uh so you, uh, when it comes to work for ciam probably it will be like 100000 users right but when it comes to uh, ciam it's millions of users and uh, another example is for for a scalability effect uh, the, the throughput or the the peak load uh, for a uh, for a uh, the, sorry the, the difference between average load and peak load in in work for ciam is not that much but when it comes to uh, ciam it can be huge for example we worked with one one customer in the financial domain Uh, the average average load is around uh, like 100 logins per minute but for two days in one month it goes to like thousands so that is because a financial institute so when your salary comes to bank like people won't see that so a huge volume of traffic could come in in few ta- few times so in, in that case the auto scalability of your system is very much important than uh, in cim system is very much important than that of a workforce ia so there are like yes so there are many other like functionality differences too i think some of them uh, like already discussed uh, in this panel yeah yeah thank you prabhat uh, there is there's one uh, last question i think i think we can wrap up with that uh, how do you compare on prem uh, versus cim uh, sorry on prem cim versus uh, cim on the cloud i think that's a good question prabhat you want to take that as well yeah yeah so uh, yeah we we see like uh, people uh, move into cloud so once again if you look at uh, like if you remember the maturity model uh, that that we explained uh, 
so before uh, i think uh, nisela rightly said this too like so before you start your cim journey you also need to define your long, long term strategy and you should have a road map right so whatever the decisions you make today uh, it it those need not to be like short term you need to also think about like when you uh, migrate from one place to another another phase uh, what level of friction you have to tolerate so you need to think about your long term journey and then you can think about whether to go for a cloud or on prem uh, so on prem will give you more flexibility like if you are to work with many data sources and if you were uh, like to work with many legacy systems and and then cloud if you go to cloud like time to market will be very less and uh, it will be like so no like uh, uh, no that much capital cost so you need to think about all these factors and what we have seen is now people also picking a hybrid cloud option so you will have some part running on prem as well as some part running uh, on on the cloud yeah thank you prabhat thank you very much for that uh, so guys uh, again uh, thank you very much for for you know being with us uh, uh, for almost uh, actually a bit more than an hour uh, really do apologize if we just went over a, a couple of minutes uh, so I want to thank uh, everyone it was a great discussion you know we we learned what uh, cim is about and, and you know what challenges we uh, face out there and how cim can be used to overcome those uh, and why we should really you know take cim uh, you know or customized access management seriously um so thank you again prabhat uh, anindya uh, yo and nisela uh, for joining in uh, to everyone out there uh, let me wrap up with with a, with a quote from forester right let me read out this for you guys so custom iem if done well uh, can uh, help businesses uh, or business owners rather increase customers engagement and brand loyalty while maintaining their security and privacy you can argue saying that you no know, it's easier said than done but that's why we talk to you know guys like prabhat uh, anindya nisela and yo Thank you very much guys uh, stay safe and secure your customers